Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. We're here on the Monongahela River at the Charleroi Lock and Dam. This place is wild, and to find out how it all works, we're going to talk to the lock master himself, Alan. Alan, thanks for having us. Hey, sure, no problem. Thanks for being here. So I know a little bit about locks and dams. I guess boats come through. I guess that's really all I know. So what's happening here? Yeah, so, so here in the Pittsburgh district, we have 23 locks and dams. If these facilities didn't exist, this river would be so shallow that you and I could walk across it and maybe not even get our knees wet. So we built these structures at specific locations to pull up the water. So this dam is holding back all the water from here to the next lock up the river, which is Maxwell Lock and Dam near Brownsville. So that's the pool that we maintain. If we didn't have those, then these towboats wouldn't have the ability to move up and down the river, you know, to haul whatever their products are. Here it is mainly coal, which obviously ends up in you know, power plants, steel mills, some of it actually goes overseas to other countries. So in the early days, whenever they were removing things, they had to wait for rainy seasons or floods, and they had to use log raft or shallow draft vessels that could only run in low water. So if we wouldn't have these facilities, we wouldn't have the ability to move this stuff right now. And what that does is it frees up the roadways. You know, if you tried to put all the coal that comes into a coal barge into, into trucks, there would just be an endless stream of trucks on the road, just tying up the roads and causing a bottleneck. So it's one of the most efficient ways to move any commodity. And so how long has there been some sort of facility here? Yeah, so this, so this original facility right here was built in 1932. And what you'll see later today is, is we're actually rehabbing this facility and creating a new lock chamber that is even bigger than this one so we can be more efficient and we can eliminate some of the bottleneck we have here on this river due to these aging facilities. How many boats come through here every day or every week? Yeah, so there is no schedule. Um, you know, this facility is operated 24-7, 365, and we just lock the boats when we get here. But our averages here at this facility are five to 600 lockages a month, and we average almost a million tons of commodities. Are there also just folks going out like on a boat ride for fun who are coming through here? Yes, yes. So we, we will lock, uh, you know, recreational boats, jet skis. We have people that come through in kayaks and canoes. I mean, all of those things are available. We're available to lock anybody through. What do we have? We have some sort of vessel coming towards us right now. So is this some sort of a barge or I, I guess I'm not great at boat identification. Oh, no, you're good. So this is so this is a standard tow boat. And he's got three barges. Looks like he's got three loaded barges. So I can't tell if that's coal. It looks like coal. So, so, the, so looking at this, so you can see how these barges are sitting on the water level. So what we can't see is that, that all of those barges are nine feet below the water level right now. So if we didn't have these, the water wouldn't be deep enough and he would be hitting the bottom and he wouldn't be able to go. So is it a lot more than nine feet? I always just imagine the Monongahela was deeper. Yeah, so it is deeper in places. Um, the, the Coast Guard actually sets the navigational channel, and that's where we're guaranteeing that it's at least nine feet. Oh, that is gravel, actually, by the way. Sorry. All right, we got three. Are these three loads of gravel? Like, what are they doing with all this gravel? Do you ever wonder? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so gravel could be going a lot of different places. Um, it could be going to places that are making mass concrete batching. It could be going to places that are going to do road work. It could be going a myriad of places. And so he's going to come in here. And we're going to close those upper gates. So how, how much of a distance is there between this gate and the other gate? So between these two gates right now, it's 720 feet. Wow, that is a, you could fit a lot in there. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. So, so this boat, this boat's probably going to be close to, he's probably going to be about 680 feet long. So, so he's going to fit real easy. And then we're going to lower the water in this chamber to the elevation of the water on the other side. So it's basically like a water escalator or a water elevator, if you, if you think. So we're going to go from up here and bring it down. So one of my guys is up there making sure they get it all tied off. And then as the boat goes down, that line will just play out and hold him against the wall until he gets all the way down. And they'll just take their lines off and we open these gates up and he'll head on his way down river. And so how long does the whole process take? So depending on the boat and depending on the conditions on a day like this, so you saw he got in here pretty easy. It's going to take about 40 minutes for the whole thing. There are no pumps. We don't pump the water in or pump the water out. This is all gravity flow. So water seeks its own level. So once we get it in here, we've basically, you know, isolated this portion of the river from everywhere else. And we're basically going to open up this emptying valve here right behind us. And it's kind of like pulling the plug on your bathtub. You know, the water's all held in here. We're going to pull the plug and the water's just going to drop down. Gosh, now we can really hear like the sloshing here. I don't know if I, I'll, let's see if we can hear it, Annie. 
That's the sound of how many gallons coming out? Um, it's roughly 15 million gallons that fill, fills this chamber, yeah. So, wow. So we're basically putting it out at, you know, a million gallons a minute are kind of rushing through here right now. Okay, so we're seeing some, the jacuzzi jets are turning on. Yeah, so, so what that is is we run some air there to make sure that if there's any kind of debris in behind those gates that we get it pushed out of there so that the gates can get all the way back into the, into the recess of the wall and out of the way of this barge that's about to exit the chamber downbound. Here we go. Look at that gravel move onto its, onto its next lock, next part of its journey. Let's see if we can get them to wave to us. Hi, sir. Oh, there's a nice wave. Gosh, that guy's got like a sick office in there. He's just like chilling in a comfy chair. He's got his, you know, snacks. He's got his computer. Yeah, so those guys, you know, they could be on that boat seven days. They could be on that boat 14 days. So some of them work seven on, seven off. Some of them work 14 on, seven off. Are they sleeping on there? They so have a little bedroom? On that, they're sleeping on that boat. They're eating on that boat. They're doing all those things on that boat. You know, they work six-hour shifts. So they work 12 hours a day, but they work them in six-hour blocks. And you mentioned you got that new tower up there. Can we go check it out? Absolutely. We can go up in that tower and take a look at whatever you want. It's a great view from up there. Okay, sweet. I don't know how many steps we just walked up, but there's no, no elevator to get up here. Well, there's no elevator right now, yeah. So unfortunately, the elevator's still on the other side there, and it's just not available for us. So we walked up about eh, 90 or so steps to get up to the new operations tower up here. Well, it's a beautiful view up here. So, so your team is going to be sitting up here so they can sort of, you know, make eye contact with those boats? Correct. So when this new chamber is open, this is where my, my guys will work out of. There's, I think, 11 cameras on the new chamber. So you're going to have a multitude of screens that will have all those displays on them. You're going to have the, the HMI that's going to show all the operating systems. And it, it looks fairly simple, but it's actually pretty complicated. So there's a lot of things to pay attention to whenever we're going through these. I don't things. think it looks fairly simple at all. I don't think anything here looks simple. It looks very complicated and, and impressive. Uh, yeah, it is. It's it's a it's a very big it's a very big undertaking, and you know, with this construction behind us, I don't I don't think there's anybody better to explain what's really going on over here than our our project manager, you know, Mr. Steve Fritz. Steve, okay, so you're going to tell us what's happening with with all this construction, and thank you very much, Alan. Yeah. So uh, thanks for coming out today, and uh, really, the the reason we build these locks and dams on the river is that we want to keep commerce moving. Uh, if we didn't have these, and Alan kind of alluded to this. The amount of money it would take to move this material by any other means would be a, pretty expensive. That barge you just saw that went through there, that had probably 4,500 tons of material in it. The cost to move that via truck would probably be anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 more. The two diesel engines that were pushing that tow, that 220 trucks would have 220 diesel engines, so the amount of pollution that gets put into the environment. So it's really, it's a, it's a cost-effective, environmentally friendly way to move material. And here at Shawleroy, uh, I think Alan explained a little bit, we're building larger lock chamber up here, because not because we needed all that extra capacity, but because that was the right thing to do. The condition of the facility prior to that, it was going to fail. So yeah. we have to keep the commerce moving so we continue to get those benefits for the general public. And this, looking out this window, I mean, it is just like mind-boggling. Should we go down there and, and get a closer look? Well, we can't go down inside the chamber because there's an awful lot of work going. It wouldn't be safe for us, but we can go to different vantage points and, and look at that. But I think the, the primary thing is once this chamber is operational, we're probably saving about 120 to $200 million a year to the general taxpayer. So that, the That's wild. It's just like how all that stuff adds up. It blows your mind. Now, maybe this is a silly question, but does the Army Corps of Engineers have anything to do with, like, the military? Uh, we are a branch of the Department of Defense, we, so we are part of the Army. Um, but the majority of the folks that work for the Corps of Engineers are civilian employees. Okay. So You didn't uh, have to go to boot camp or something? We did not have to go to boot camp or anything. Uh, but our district and, and all districts are run by, uh, by a commander, and that is a military, uh, a military person. And we're allowed to, like, walk over this bridge? Yeah, you can walk across this bridge and we get a look at what's going on down inside the chamber down there. Oh, my gosh. This is wild. It just feels like something out of, like, a sci-fi movie. There's so much happening. Do you have, do you know how many people are working on this site? I imagine there's probably about 60 to 80 people working here at this particular time. And they're doing various amounts of things. They're placing concrete. They're tying rebar. Uh, they're finishing concrete. 
um, uh, general cleanup. Uh, they're installing machinery. So there's a lot of pieces that are going on, and it's very, uh, it's very orchestrated to make sure that they aren't stepping on top of each other while they're doing all that work. And how long does a project like this take? Just this particular lock alone, if we were only building this, this would probably take between 8 to 10 years to build it. The Lower Mon project, which actually was authorized back in 1992, um, this is part of that project. And we were going to finish that project by 2005. However, the funding didn't come in as we expected it to, so that really delayed the construction. Nothing ever opens on time, though. It's just like with a restaurant, with a lock, anything, everything's always delayed. Right, so... Uh, instead of it taking us, you know, 10 years, we're on the we're on a 30-year path right now. But we see we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We expect that this chamber is going to be operational uh, the later part of 2023. And can you tell me about that giant yellow machine car crane thing? That thing is nuts. Yeah, that's a that's called a gantry crane, and that's utilized to help them facilitate work inside the chamber. You can see right now it's lifting a piece of equipment. Looks like a giant robot spider. Yeah, I, I can't tell exactly what it is from here, but uh, it, it could be a giant robot spider. I don't <laughs> think that's what it is. Uh, it, it might be something for them to uh, move concrete around to place it in different locations. Um, so the, the top of that can swivel and then they can move concrete from one place to another. It's turning around now, it sort of looks like an X-Wing. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, this project is incredibly impressive, and it was so cool just to learn more about how these locks work. So, Steve, thanks so much for showing us around. You're welcome, Boaz. Thanks for coming out to see us.